Listening in, the leader of the Scottish Liberal Democrats, Tavish Scott, what odds would you give us? I guess rather, well, I'm not a betting man, I suppose I should start by saying, Glenn, but uh, I don't think they would be uh, too good at all. I thought uh, all the other parties were pretty consistent about this and have said what their position is. They think there are, we think there are more important things to, uh, to deal with for our government in Scotland, and I, I think that's the position, that'll be the position until 2011. But let's just uh, be clear about your position. You do favour devolving tax and benefits powers to the Scottish Parliament as proposed in the Steel Commission, don't you? Uh, I'd love to see our Parliament strengthened and I'd love to see uh, our ability to particularly uh, ensure that our, our MSPs are absolutely responsible for both sides of the balance sheet, for tax and spend. Uh, yes, I'd like to see uh, that happen. And Those... do you think, um, Tammy Scott, do you think that that package of powers, maximising the powers of the devolved Scottish Parliament, would help it grow the Scottish economy and uh, increase the number of jobs in Scotland? That has to be the objective of all of us, that uh, at a time of uh, recession uh, across the UK, but here in Scotland as well, youth unemployment particularly, a real worry for all of us. Would those we've extra got powers help? Uh, you, well, I was coming on to say that, that I, yeah, we've got to find the right mix of responsibilities and of powers that could uh, assist us in, in challenging uh, those uh, big uh, difficulties that we face at this time. And I don't think we should be frightened of looking at how best to enhance our responsibilities, but more importantly, uh, ensuring that on tax and spend we could make uh, far-sighted decisions for the future of the Scottish economy. But you've already had a good look. You've come up with a plan for increasing the powers of the Scottish Parliament. You're telling us that those powers are necessary to address Scotland's economic problems, why not then seize the chance of making all that happen by backing the referendum? But which referendum are we talking about, Glenn? The thing is, the well, Mr, he, Mr. 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 Simon Salmond is on... offering you the chance to help design it. Well, he, he was actually offering us the chance to design four referendums, if I got him right, and he didn't also go on to say that he'd also be offering us a chance to have a referendum after he's negotiated, because that's one of the interesting questions the SNP never answer. Ah, would that make all the difference to you? <laughs> well, that would be five. So you're I in favour of Two, two <laughs> referendums. Well, I think the whole thing is frankly nearly laughable because if you had a multi-option referendum, what wins? Does 30% win? Well, no, no, Does 40% no, no. win? Does 21% having, having win? Having attended the launch of the White Paper this morning, what Mr Salmond was offering was a multi-option referendum, two questions, one testing independence and the other making it possible to test your preferred option of devolution max. Oh, so Kalman's now out, is it? I mean, I thought they were offering Kalman as well. Well, I, I, if that's what you want, he <laughs> seems to be, be happy with that too. Well, I, I think my point is that I don't see how you could have a referendum on all these things no, no, all No, what would you time. like to be on the ballot paper against the status quo and independence? Well, I don't want anything on the ballot paper because I think but it's all enormous distraction. you've already told us you want more powers for the Scottish yeah, Parliament. But I don't how think is that going to happen if you don't put it on the ballot paper? Because why, why would I assume that the referendum was the only way to make these things uh, happen? We went through all do you think the Labour or the Conservative Scot parties are going to deliver any time soon on the sort of powers that you want the Scottish Parliament to have? Well, that, that is a different question, but it's a really fair one, and I, I have my deepest concerns about Labour's ability to kick this thing into the long grass and the Tories to kick it into a big forest rather than even the long grass. So, so isn't a referendum by the Scottish Parliament to the Scottish people your best hope of getting the solution that you want. No, because uh, the solution that I want, I think we can deliver, but what's important there is finding the best mechanism to do it. And I think politicians who are going to spend the next year arguing about the mechanism and not all we'd actually do are not politicians that will actually cover uh, and gain uh, support across the country. Okay, in the but what, all what the is the best mechanism in your view for delivering maximum powers for the Scottish Parliament? Well, we've worked it through uh, the uh, commission that has existed between uh, other parties, between political parties in Scotland. There's a programme there that could be implemented. Up until today, uh, Alex Salmond was saying we could implement these things uh, quickly. I see he's kind of dismissing that today. So there seems to be an inconsistency there in the nationalists' uh, position on, on that point. But I, what I do recognise, Glenn, is that where you work a plan with others to try and come to a consensus about how to achieve something in politics, I think you have to try and do that, try and get on with that. Of course I'd like to go further, but surely I I should uh, work hard to try and achieve what we could achieve and that doesn't need all these other referendums and that kind of thing we could just get on with that and pass legislation in the house of commons in london to make that happen and that's what i want to see happen rather more quickly
Okay, Tavish Scott, leader of the Scottish Liberal Democrats, thanks for talking to us live from Edinburgh. With